Let's open our Bibles now and uh, let's listen to the word of the Lord. May He guide and instruct us today. We know that the word of God is living, it is active. And Lord, so let's uh, welcome the word of the Lord. Let, uh, let's uh, read Psalm 139. Let's read two verses 23 and 24. Okay, let's read Psalm 23. Uh, Psalm 139, verse 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. So oftentimes, we uh, search our hearts, our own hearts, especially when we have done something wrong, if we failed, if we have sinned, and we could see some consequences coming, and we ask the Lord, Lord, what happened? Why did these things happen? And we search our hearts. Yet friends, if we do the searching ourselves, oftentimes we are being deceived. We are being deceived by our own hearts, because in, uh, in Jeremiah 17, uh, nine, we are told that the heart is deceitful above all things, and who would understand? So it's hopeless case. So we are being deceived by our own hearts, and we, we try to cover it up. And yet, we need the grace of God, and we need the help of God to search us. That's why in Jeremiah chapter 17, Verse 10 now, we are told, verse 10, I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward a man according to his conduct, according to what his deeds deserve. So it is the Lord that will examine our hearts. He will come like an x-ray. He will just check our hearts. What's wrong with the heart? And so we ask the Lord, Lord, come and examine my heart. And so he was saying that I, the Lord, will examine the heart. The purpose is to reward a man according to his conduct, according to what his deeds deserve. When we talk of the reward, friends, this is not like a, a good reward often. Because again, we sin against the Lord. And if we sin against the Lord, we shall be paid according to what we have done. That is our reward. And so, friends, today, let us allow the Lord to examine our hearts. But how will the Lord examine our hearts? How will the Lord do that? See, Lord, here, examine my heart. But how will the Lord do it? Again, we are told in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, that the Word of God is powerful. It is active. It is sharper than any double-edged sword, and it penetrates to the division of soul and spirit, bones and marrows, and it is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So who would know our hearts? See, we said that, Lord, examine my heart. See, it's through the word, through the word, because the word will come and minister unto us. Wow, the, the word is very powerful, friends, because if you read on, in that verse, chapter 4, Hebrews, verse 13, we are not told. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is un uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him who, whom we must give account. So nothing. So sometimes we thought that we can hide from God. As I said earlier, friends, we can always deceive ourselves. Number one enemy of man is who? Himself. Number one enemy of man is himself. And not your neighbors, not your friends, not people around. It's in, inside here. You know why? It's here, friends, that things are done. Decisions are made here. Whether we enjoy life or not, it's based on our decisions. If our heart is full of wickedness, 
then wickedness will flow out of that heart and we do wicked things. Right? It's, it's here. That's why we say that our number one enemy, well, they can only influence us. People can only deceive us. People can only tempt us. Temptation will come, friends. But who will make the final decision? You. Right? They can try to influence you, but you will make the decision. So you are making enemy of yourself. Because who will suffer in the end? Nobody. But the one who made the decision for himself. Right? And so again, friends, that's how we deal with the heart. Because it is deceitful above all things. Now, the Lord can also come to test us. See, it's one thing just to search us. It's another thing, to, another thing to test us. He will come to test us. See, Lord, this heart is so pure. And we rejoice. But will we pass the test? Will we pass the test? See, will, the, will we be able to overcome the challenge that will come to test our faith? Are we able to stand our ground and say, no, I won't sin? Or should we submit to sin when it comes as a temptation? So friends, again, Psalm 66, verse 10. Here comes David. And he was saying here that, yes, we shall be tested. He said, for you, O God, tested us. You refined us like silver. You brought us into prison and laid burden on our backs. He said that you will test us. See, you will allow things to happen. In fact, we shall be in prison. We shall be sick. We shall be tested in our finances. But how do we respond to this testing, friends? How do we respond to this testing? Should we yield? Should we suffer? And as if we are so helpless? Friends, God has a great plan for us. <laughs> Amen. He got a better plan for us. How do you respond to those afflictions? These are actually afflictions. That's why in Psalm 119, verse 71, this is how David responded to those that would come as affliction to him. He said, It was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decrees. So he was saying, Yes, Lord, if this comes as a test, I welcome it. Why? That I may learn your decrees. It was good for me. You know why? Because in 69 or 67, he said, verse 67 of Psalm 119, he said, Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I obey your word. He said, Before I was afflicted, before I suffered, I went astray. So he was saying that it's me, Lord. I cannot blame anyone else. It's me. It's my decision. But it was good now. Looking back, it was good. Now I understand that you are teaching me something. Now I learned my lesson. Amen. And so, friends, in the case of David, well, how often would David would put his own life into his own hands? He said that I make decisions on my own. And I suffer or I enjoy based on those decisions. And so he was saying that, Lord, thank God. I thank you, Lord, for this affliction. So have you gone through these afflictions, friends? How are you doing? Like, how are you dealing with these afflictions or sufferings that you're going through? I'm not saying that you enjoy it. That you always welcome afflictions. But if they come, how will you handle it? Should you spend your time murmuring and complaining, meantime not enjoying life? Or should you just welcome it, Lord? Say, Lord, it's your will. Let me just deal with it according to your ways. Amen. So let us allow the Lord to search our hearts. That's why David was saying, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Friends, there is no other way for us 
to overcome all this, but to let the Lord search our hearts. See, in verse 23, he was saying, search me, O God, and know my heart. But in, in verse 1, if you look at verse 1, he said, O Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. See, he was saying that, Lord, you already have done the searching, and you know me. But in verse 23, he was saying that, Lord, search me. So he was saying that, again, Lord, search me. So it's a daily request, a pleading for God. Lord, search me. What's wrong with me? See, check if I'm still in the faith. So what was the reason why God would test us? So I pray that, I, again, we will learn the lesson here. So reasons why God searched our hearts. What are the reasons? Number one, to expose pride. Pride. Well, in the case of David, he was a great man. A man after God's own heart. But he was so concerned, friends, about himself. He said that I can do great things. And indeed, he was the greatest king of Israel. The greatest king of Israel, David. And so he said that, Lord, expose pride in my heart. Friends, pride is the, is the hardest sin that can be detected. Right? It's hard. It's, it's the hardest sin that we can even accept. If someone comes to you and say, you're proud, how do you respond? How do you respond? Sister Lay, you are proud. Where is Sister Lay? If I said to Sister Lay, you are proud, how would Sister Lay respond? And if Sister Lay responds, no, I'm not. <laughs> well, she's proud. <laughs> right? If someone will come to you and say that you're proud, how would you respond? Respond with humility. So say that I didn't know that. So can you tell me more about this? See, just ask. Rather than say, no, I'm not. Actually, the, tr the truth is you are proud. See, friends, we don't respond that way. Psalm 115, verse 1. Because of the great things that David had been doing, friends, he was so conscious about this sin of pride. So he said, not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to you, to your name be the glory because of your love and faithfulness. So David was saying that, no, Lord. Now they are talking about glory here. Who will get the glory? If David would go to battle, and he would always win, friends, there was no time when it was recorded in the scripture that he lost a battle. There was no time. He would always go and fight the battle and he would come back victorious, and he would say that, no, Lord, the glory is not mine. The glory is yours. Amen. He was so conscious. Those small things, friends, you know, give glory to God. Your successes, See, even when you were young, your success is, is studies. And then when you graduate, you got a job. When you got a job, you got promotions. And you are able to acquire this and that. Friends, give glory to God. Don't claim the glory. Because if you claim the glory, then friends, what happens? What happens? Pride would come. And when pride comes, what happens? Well... David knew what pride can do. And he taught it to his son, Solomon. And Solomon wrote it as part of the Proverbs. That's why in Proverbs 16, verse 18, we are told. Proverbs 16, verse 18. Pride goes before destruction. A haughty spirit before a fall. See that, you know, look at anyone. He was saying here that, look at anyone. They failed. Look at them. What caused their failure? So one thing that can cause failure, and that is pride. Because pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before, before a fall. 
And so he was saying that I have to guard my heart. I got to allow the Lord to search my heart, a daily searching. That's why he said, that, Lord, you have searched me and know me already, but search me again and know my heart. Amen. Search me again. Will you find sin is still in my heart? And so I pray that all of us allow the Lord to search our heart for that very purpose. And also in Psalm 131, verse 1, he said, My heart is not proud, O Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. But I have stilled and quieted my soul like a wind child with its mother's wound in its mother's uh, with its mother like wind child in my soul or is my soul within me amen so he was saying that i'm not proud lord why why was david saying and confidently saying that he was not proud because he was saying that i don't concern myself with great matters amen i know my priorities lord i know my limit i don't go beyond my limit I don't concern myself with great matters. Things too wonderful for me. Amen. I am content, Lord, with what I have. And because I'm content, I'm grateful with what I have. I don't take pride in what I have. This is David. That's why he was saying that, Lord, search my heart. Because you know my heart. So I pray, friends, that again, let us guard our hearts that no pride will come. Because pride can destroy. Amen. If in that particular case that we were praying earlier about the president of America, if pride prevailed, there would have been war today. Amen. He was pressured. See, you are the greatest country and someone will just shoot one of your assets and you do nothing about it? Wow! A big pressure, friends, to keep up with the pride. To keep up the name that we are the greatest, we get to keep our name as the greatest. If someone hits us, we hit back. But friends, pride did not prevail. Amen. Reason prevailed. Compassion prevailed. And that is wisdom. So don't let pride come and oppress you. Amen. Fighting for your right. What is your right anyway? Amen. We fight for our right just to keep our rights. Pride. So, number one. Number two. To expose fear and anxiety. Why would God search our hearts? To expose things in this heart. That's why David was saying that, Lord, examine my heart. Expose the fear that I have. Expose the anxiety that I have. Because he knew also the price of fear. Because once you are fearful, friends, you are gripped in fear. You are, you are actually immobilized by fear. And he knew that. He got to face a reality that he was the king of Israel. And he got to lead people to battle. And so remove fear in my heart, anxiety in my heart. So that was the, uh, the, the prayer of uh, David. Psalm 56, verse 3 to 4. He said, When I am afraid, I will trust in you, in God whose word I praise, in God I trust, I will not be afraid. What can mortal man do to me? See, a lot, friends, a lot of times, why are we fearful? Why are we fearful? Why are we afraid? Afraid of what? Well, a lot of times we're afraid of what people will say. What people will say. See, we try to protect a name. And we thought that we can always protect that name. Friends, only the Lord can preserve the name. Only the Lord can protect us. And here comes David was, was saying that 
I am not fearful, Lord. What can man do to me? What can man do to you? Talk bad about you? So what? So what? If people talk bad about me, I rejoice. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You know why? People talk bad about me or talk about me even without me spending a dime. Without me spending a dime. See, a lot of people, friends, the movie stars, they pay people to talk about them. Right? They pay people to talk about them. Or talk about me, whether good or, or bad. Just talk about me. For as long as my name is out there, talk about me. And they pay, pay a lot, friends. They pay a lot. Movie stars, they pay a lot. Just for people to talk about them. And so if people are talking about you, you, got, you are blessed. You have a free advertisement. <laughs> Amen. You have a free promotion if people talk about you. Wow. Sa dami-dami ng tao, ikaw pinag-uusapan, mapalad ka, kapatid. Sabi niya, masama naman ang pinag-uusapan sa akin, mapalad ka pa rin. Pinag-uusapan ka, ibig sabihin niyo, sikat ka. Hindi ba sikat ka? Eh, kala, sa dami-dami, milyong-milyong na tao, ikaw pinag-uusapan? Aba, iba ka. <laughs> Di ba? Uh, pwede kang mag-artista. <laughs> All right. So if people talk about you, friends, just rejoice. Amen. The intent, who cares about the intent? For as long as you are right before God. Amen. What matters is your relationship with God. That's it. Are you right before God? Go for it. Amen. Don't be offended. Don't be offended, friends. If people are talking bad about you. So let not this weakness cause you to fall. And so Lord, expose, expose my pride, expose my anxieties and my fear. So don't fear a bit, man. Psalm 40, verse 1 to 2. And we thought that David was only just saying it, but actually, friends, he did it. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. Wow. So here comes David, friends. I don't care what people would say. Expose the fear, and he dealt with that fear, friends, head on. And he said that, you know how I dealt with this fear? I waited on the Lord. I waited for his deliverance because I know that the Lord has a great plan. And he said, because I waited, I cried, I waited. He said, he lifted me out of this slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. See how the Lord can relieve us? How the Lord can save us? Out of our trouble. You could be drowning, friends, in all kinds of troubles. But the Lord will lift us up. Amen. Only wait on Him. And don't fear. Don't fear. You know, fear can cause you to drown in your situation. You know, I, we were wondering why, you know, back home, uh, you know, I always love to talk about that river that we have. Because that's a great river in, in, in our home, hometown. And so, again, every time that there's flood, so many things happening, friends, in there. There was a time when uh, a big boat capsized. People were drowning. And, of course, the people by the bank, see, their role there is just to watch things happen. If there is a problem, they would be fast friends to go and save those that are drowning. But, you know, the wonders, you know, like, a, how can you explain this? They were asking themselves, how can you explain this? The adults, they were drowning, and they have the hard time of saving this, these adults. But the babies, the babies, they are playing. First, they are being killed by the, by the current, and the babies, <laughs> they are not drowning. Why? Why are the babies not drowning? 
There is no fear. There is no fear. But the adult who, they try to save themselves. And the Bible tells us that he who tries to save himself will die. If you try to save yourself, you will die. Because we got one Savior. Amen. That's why Jesus, he who, he who tries to keep himself will lose it. But he who loses his life for my sake will keep it. But that's what happened, friends. How often, not only once, it happened. Babies, you know, they just swim. They were playing. And the current is so strong, they are being carried. And this man, they try to chase them and then carry them on that. They don't struggle. As if they were just playing. Why? There is no fear in their hearts. But how about the adults? The first thing that comes to mind every time that we face challenge is death. Because that is the sting of the devil. Amen. He will come and say that you will die. You feel something? Oh, cancer. See, the thought, just the thought, every time you feel something, it's cancer. Who said so? Who said so? Who said that you've got cancer? See, every time there's a pain, cancer. And once it comes, it terrifies you. It terrifies you. That's why David was saying that, come Lord, search my heart. Expose all this fear and anxieties. These are useless. Amen. How often do you go to see a doctor and tell your doctor that you are sick and you insist that you are sick? And the doctor said that you are well. <laughs> Amen. And you said that, no, it's cancer. Friends, let me tell you. Don't put a name to the pain that you're experiencing. That pain, you know what that, what that pain is called? That's a call to prayer. A call to prayer. The Lord just wants you to pray. Amen. I was telling the leaders, I don't know if I told you this, but a month ago, I had a bad, I was in bad shape, friends, let me tell you. If I went to the doctor, the doctor might have said that you got the cancer of the truth. <laughs> so bad, so painful, I cannot even touch it here. I tried to swallow, it's painful. I touch it, so painful. And I said, should I go? And it, like at the end, you know, it becomes more, the pain grows every day. And I said, should I go and see the doctor, Dr. Chin? And Dr. Chin will say it again, okay, uh, first things first, let's check your blood pressure. <clears throat> and I tried to avoid him. <laughs> and Dr. Chin would always come and say, you know, Pastor, I'm praying for you. <laughs> our doctor friends, our doctor is praying for me. <laughs> so I'm pray Every time I go, I'm praying for you, Pastor. Wow. He is a praying doctor. And so I said, if I go and see him, what will he do? X-ray? Uh, what else? Uh, scan, what do you call this? A CT scan or anything that they want to do. And I said, what will I do, Lord? I was crying out one day, morning, early morning. I said, well, painful, Lord. I touched it. Painful. And the Lord reminded me of one thing. And he said that, remember the time when there was this blind man that came to me and said, Lord, heal me, Lord, heal me. And God, the Lord said, come. And he stooped down because that man was born blind. He stooped down, took something. He made the clay out of it, applied it in the eyes of the, of the, of the man, and then he said to the man, go, wash in the pool of Siloam. And the man went, and when the, one, the man washed himself in the pool, he came out seeing. He was healed. How? How was the man healed? Friends, the saliva of Jesus. And so I said, that morning, I said, Lord, what will I do? 
Do the same thing. So I did. Friends, miracles of miracles. You won't believe it, friends. I did not go to see Dr. Chin. No. Miracles of miracles happen. Friends, the same day in the afternoon, hmm, no more pain. The following day, completely gone. Friends, God had given us. What do you think? How do you think uh, people survived before the doctors came into the picture? What do you think? When Tarzan was there in the jungle, <laughs> and there was no doctor for Tarzan, how did he manage, friends, to survive with all the pains? How are the animals surviving without doctors? Friends, a very powerful medicine. This plus faith equals healing. Amen. Well, that's my case. In your case, you can try it, but you might need my saliva. <laughs> and then Sister Maya said, oh, gross. No, 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 no. But if it heals, why not? Right? Because we were, I was reminded, friends, yung panahon namin, nung mga bata pa kami, matagal na yun. Kasi bata pa kami noon, so more than 60 years ago. Pagka nagkakasakit kami noon, supposing napuwing, napuwing na ganoon, makita ka ng isang matanda, alika, bata ka, alika. <laughs> Kukuha na ng panyo. Di ba, panyo, lalagyan ng panyo, lalagyan dito sa kanina. So, and, it's gone. Miracles. See, when we were young, yeah, all people will do that. See, they see you, they, you got wound. That's how they do it back home when we were young. That was 60 years ago. God is a miracle working God. Amen. Number three. To expose sin and hindrances that may pre prevent us from entering heaven. To expose sin and hindrances. Why would you like God to search your heart? See, to expose a sin. Because sin separates us from God. And so, again, friends, don't presume that all is well. Because not all is well. See, many times we sin, even unconsciously. There are sins that we commit, friends, consciously, and yet there are also sins that we commit unconsciously. We are not even aware of it, that we are sinning. And so, only God can expose these things. That's why in Psalm 44, verse 21, Psalm 44, verse 21, we are told here, would not God have discovered it? Well, let's read from verse 20. If we had forgotten the name of our God, or spread out our hands to foreign gods, would not God have discovered it, since he knows the secret of the heart? So friends, allow the Lord to search your heart. Even the secret of the heart, God knows. Amen? Your favorite sin, you are about to, to repent, Lord, forgive. And then you are reminded that you have done something. But that's your favorite sin. What do you do? It's your favorite sin. What will you do? Will you repent of it? When you repent, friends, you've got to turn away from it. But you don't want to turn away from it. What do you do? That's why, again, the heart comes into play. And the heart will deceive us. And the heart will say that, no, it's fine. Repent of all other things. Be selective in your, in your uh, repentance. Be selective. Don't repent of everything. As for us, Lord, forgive. He will forgive. Don't even mention this because that's your favorite sin. Friends, would not God know it? You can deceive yourself, but God will know what is in that heart. Amen. The sin that you've done in secret, you alone have done it. Nobody has seen it. Nobody. 
God knows what you have done. So what, what will you do? Lord, expose it, Lord. Friends, there are times when we enjoy the sins because we don't see the consequence yet. But remember that there is a consequence. And we need to repent of these things. Yes, you might be unable to overcome it at once. But do the right, the right thing. Repent. Amen? And then later on, the Lord will give you strength, more strength every day to overcome. Eventually, be set free from it. But you got to do it, friends. Because often, 1 Corinthians 10, 12 comes. We are told here. So, if you think you're standing or standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. The reason why we don't even refuse, we don't even allow God to search our heart is because we thought that all is well. We're okay. How are you? I'm okay. Yeah, all is well. Yes, all is well. No. See, no burdens. But we are told, if you think you're standing, think again. Or otherwise, you will fall. So is it that better, friends, if we say, God, search my heart. Tell me my faults. Show me my errors. Is it that better than saying that, no, all is well? So when we come before the Lord today, as we partake of the communion, let's do the searching. Amen. We are told that it's God that does the searching. But there is also a command for us in 2 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, 13, verse 5. We are told here, examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you unless, of course, you fail the test? So he was saying here that examine yourself. Examine it. Test it. Amen. Do you not know that Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. I pray that no one will fail the test today. Let's examine ourselves. Let us the Holy Spirit to come and help us examine ourselves. Amen. Proverbs 20, verse 27. We are told here, the lamp of the Lord searches the spirit of a man. It searches out his inmost being. In another version, we are told that the spirit of the man is the lamp of the Lord to search our inward being. And so let us help, ask the Lord to help us search our hearts today. What have I done, Lord? I want to partake of the cup and, and the bread. What have I done? Search my heart, Lord. Test me. And know my anxious thoughts that there be no hindrance, friends, is us receiving his best. Amen. Let's stand up.